Now, I understand that the engine in this is almost 600 cubic inches, is that 680 right? cubic inches. 680 cubic inches. Six cylinder, it was one of the first six cylinder race cars. 680 cubic inches, wasn't there a cubic inch rule? There was, and they violated it. They did? <laughs> yes. So this was the first car that cheated on the engine side? That's exactly right. What was the rule? <laughs> the rule was 600. 600, and yes. this was 680? This was 680, yes. Was there a NASCAR inspection there? Uh, there wasn't. There was not? Yes. Wow. So no penalties. The Black Beast had to use two chains to put the power of that 680 cubic inch engine to the ground. What kind of fuel did it run on? This ran on regular gasoline. Back then, the octane was about 65, so uh, right now we just take it regular gas. It runs great. Uh, it raced in 16 races, won six out of 16. And this car's got history not only in the Vanderbilt Cup, but it's got history at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It did. It ran in the first Indy 500 in 1911 and was one of the favorites to win the race. It broke down, though, on the 53rd lap and finished 33rd. It broke on lap 53, and that's surprising because the Black Beast was built by Alco, a company that built locomotives that went millions of miles. Alco also built automobiles from 1906 to 1913, but soon decided the car business just wasn't profitable enough. Alco's young plant manager disagreed, and he started his own car company. His name, Walter P. Chrysler. There were four Alco racers eventually built for 1909 and 1910 Vanderbilt Cup races. This was the only Alco race car. And this was the showpiece for the Alco line of, of automobiles. So they use this as the showpiece to promote their, uh, their car lines. How long did it take to build a car back then? It took about six months, all by hand. Wow, so it was all hand, hand It was built. all hand built, the whole car was hand built. Hand built in the early 1900s didn't mean assembly. It meant every part had to be designed, forged, machined, or fabricated from raw materials, right down to the nuts and bolts. These cars were one-off works of art. Although built in America, the Black Beast was a world traveler. I was looking for a car of the era. I found, of all places, on the internet, this car was available in Brussels. Uh on the internet. On the internet. So a car that was built when the Telegraph was was popular, yes. you found on the internet. I found on the internet. When this car raced, it, it was actually manual fuel pump over there, as you can see. Oh, so it wow. took two people to drive the car. It was the driver and the mechanician. The mechanician would sit here and just pump the fuel at intervals to get the, the fuel from the 30-gallon uh, tank into the engine. And did he have to maintain a pressure off of one of these gauges? Yes, he would be watching the gauges. Now, why'd they call them machinations? It was uh, just the term that they used. It was really a driving mechanic. And in racing, until about the 1920s, it, it, there were always two people who were required to race in a car. The driver was always safe. They had the steering wheel. The driver knew they were going. The mechanician never knew where they were going to make a turn. And usually, if there was an injury or a fatality, it was the mechanician who, who, who really was the person who was in the most dangerous position.